Hello everyone and welcome to today's full highlights of TMO2, which I participated in versus Server 32's BD alliances in BDSL. It is an absolute jam packed with actually some names that you might have recognized even from this channel with some videos. So with all that, let's get into the full highlights of this absolute chaotic game where Server 2 for Server 32 for the first time. Welcome to today's video. Yes, smash a like, comment and subscribe for more daily Roots of War videos and Call of Dragons videos on the channel. We do cover everything to do with Call of Dragons here on this channel since we are an unofficial Call of Dragons content creator. So, as you can see, this is the opening gambit, if you want to say, the opening gambit of our team and just to give you guys a little heads up I was part of the middle team so that's where you will mostly see a lot of this footage but I do have a little look you know around the left and right flanks during this time too but we are part of the middle team we are trying to fight for the middle and trying to fight for the enemies basically whole at this uh, point and what we're going to be doing here is waiting for our alliance rally to come into play as soon as it comes into play as you can see there immortal with the rally we will then push with it because obviously if anyone tries to block it that means they're basically being useless if i'm honest they're just blocking we're not doing really anything crazy and it's going to allow us to then obviously start dealing damage to them and the thing is with an archer rally which a lot of people don't realize obviously they can try and target it down and hit it but with Nico here and I'm guessing they've got Kanara behind it potentially is a massive heavy counter attack rally meaning all these guys are basically hitting the rally and taking free damage and it's allowing me now with my cavalry here to start punishing some of those players so i have gone and focused down onto the 16 guy um on the right side i'm trying to use my flying marches to basically push them out of the field and you can see i'm always trying to be in and out of combat and then in this section since we are doing such a good push what i said during this time and you can watch the full live gameplay which is uploaded later on you can hear me even say we're going to start targeting whoever is the lowest because the thing is with cavalry i'm really really fast at rage generation and closing down targets so my game plan in a Roots of War at the start, since I play Spring Wardens, is I do have nearly 800,000 cavalry units because of the ranged and the flying. And it allows me to actually use these units with some funky combos to allow me to basically weaken down the enemy and get some free PvP presence. And then later on, I can bring out those mages and archers and infantry marchers that I'm more stronger with and actually deal loads more damage. So it's about actually, you know, saving your troops and using your troops correctly throughout the Roots of War so you don't obviously have nothing left over by the 30 minute mark. Because if you do this correctly, as you'll see, I do able, and this is like the fourth game we've done it now, we're able to play the full length of the game, right? And that is the most important thing, being able to play the full length. So you are always participating for your alliance. So this was a really exciting opening gambit, as you can see from there in the background. We've pushed them all the way now into their main zone. And I'm discussing now, maybe this is the time I actually bring some mages out because of the way the combat is laid out right now. Maybe mages is gonna be a better fit for me. So I brought out my Lilia and Valen combo with a support march, which was Fear and my Wild Deer. I could have done Wild Deer and Alloin too, but the way I was just using this was honestly to be as defensive as I could with the Wild Deer Fear and using the tier of Arbon to actually heal my main mage unit and my allies around since it's going to prioritize up to you know three to five targets with that healing so it's a really powerful artifact to bring in a certain scenarios so that's what I'm doing right now we're looking at the right side we can see BDSL here with Terry Foster and Big Paws some of the big names there in the BDSL alliance and we might even see a little bit later Legionus appear as well because he 
was playing in this and participating. So it was really fun for the first time to actually play against the guy. We've covered him, if you're wondering, in the Flying Cavalry video for the first time, which all of you guys love to see when we watch that Flying Cavalry player just go absolutely crazy with those Spring Warden Flat Forest Eagles. So with that, let's fast forward. We're going to go into the future. Obviously, this is a highlight. We don't want to watch the full 50 minutes in one go. So with all that, let's go into some more of the most crazier footage where it was honestly so good in the open field experience. And here we are. We've moved forward right for the 36 minute mark and the game is actually close as you can see. The BD um, Alliance has I think 9,900 points and we currently have 13,900. So we're about to hit the 14k mark. They're about to hit the 10k mark. So there's a 4,000 point difference which is basically a lifestone almost in one capture. So you need to be prepared to attack and defend those zones throughout the availability because as you can see in the top left corner if you are new to roots of war you are able to see in three minutes 40 time and the time will be ticking the ability of that lifestone to be spawned and captured so this has been a really close game as you can see so far with the 4000 and now we are bringing basically four march three marches to the main field here and fighting so we've got um one march actually in a rally that's coming around we have our alistair as you can see he's just garrisoning right now but our two main marches and i this is what i will bring in my main march was in Madeline Infantry with Nika, because my Nika is 5345, a really powerful Nika in the open field with my Madeline. And then I obviously had my Lilia Valen behind. And I was acting as honestly one of the front lines for my alliance, even with my T4 units, because I do trust with the other infantry players with me, we will overpower eventually because if they target my madeline i'm just saying that's a t4 unit and i'm go just gonna go and put it out there the time and pressure the enemy takes to waste their time killing my t4 unit is better because my other frontline units might be t5 and they get to push through even harder so i really do like the ability to play as a tank and try and draw that aggro out from my alliance members but here, what we could see was BDSL here doing a nice little flank around, as you can see, their uh, Hall of Nature that we had captured. And by doing this, I then started playing a more peeling style of tank, which means I basically attach myself, you know, like peeling a banana. You kind of, you know, pull yourself apart from your team but by doing that you are defending the opponents right so these guys are attacking on the flank instead of being on the front line where my other front line players are i opted to then defend the back side and by doing that it's allowing my major units there as you can see to be positioned nicely and they can start targeting down these units and all of my team can start targeting them which they do and then once they have done you can see my madeline then now moves forward to start moving again back onto the front line we do still stay, take out the flanks one by one but as you notice the positioning is moving closer and closer back to that center front line. So this is just a really good little showcase here of awareness, of positioning on my behalf. And I thought you guys might like to see that because again, look, we are using our infantry here to basically body block and not allow this mage to go any further. We're drawing all the aggro. We even get another infantry march now stuck on us because it basically is trying to stop us from doing what we're doing, which is really good. Cause that means they're not obviously in the main and it's allowing us to keep pushing. And this is a really good thing. We are so far away. We obviously have a lower or a longer refresh timer compared to the BDSL Alliance here that are on the ramp. They can just come in and out really quickly since we are knocking on their door really aggressively. So it is all about teamwork here and trying to get your units to do their role properly so your alliance members can shine in their role right so i really did like this and this is where you can see legionis now on the battlefield with his madeline and he does have his syndrome on the field as well the archers 
Um, so he has everything out, and this is where they start to retake, obviously, that zone and start to push towards the center. And if you just noticed, we are at the 31 minute mark, so halfway in the game here, I'm already at 7k points. And this was when I was just, you know, trying to throw out troops and not really pay attention to too much of my actual merit score. So it's nice to see that, you know, even halfway through, we've almost hit the requirement of 10,000 points, which you need to hit to get those extra rewards. So let's again skip forward into the future and hopefully you've been enjoying these full highlights of the Server 32 versus Server 2 alliances, BD versus TM here um, in one go. And if you have, smash a like, comment and subscribe guys. We're doing this every single time. We've got also another special um, full game, which is TM versus EIS, our second team that we were running. We was allowing them obviously to fight someone else and we did, right? So. I hope you guys will enjoy that video when that comes out in a couple of days. So, with all that, let's move forward. Let's go back into the future and get a bit more craziness going because obviously this fight does go on a little bit longer, but I don't want to spoil the full live gameplay. Again, you can just watch that and it'll be timestamped so you can go to any of the minutes in 10 minute increments and just go to where you want to watch basically so hope you enjoy that so let's go a bit more into the future and then hope you enjoy this roots of war experience and welcome back and we've got as you can see 15 minutes remaining on the battlefield here but this is a really cool point because as you look on the left side the behemoths are spawned and these are where the dragon behemoths are going to come out and they currently are fighting so as you know the dragon behemoth is spawned somewhere on the map and if you have a really good eye and you look at the very top corner you're going to be able to actually see the little white symbol of the dragon there on the left side and it's actually at our tree of healing now it's in the center of the map and it's about to hit the livestone and you're going to see it come across that bridge in a moment so be ready and there it is so we've got our dragon here against the bdsl alliance and obviously the bdsl alliance will summon their dragon at some point or if they haven't have already it might be just defending somewhere else so this is a really good one here. We've got our two main archer marchers. I'm running Kanara and Sindrion, which I think is honestly just the best PvP match. It's just the number one archer march at the minute for the ability of how much damage it deals, as well as all the stats and reductions you give to your opponent through the Kanara. And the Kanara tree allows you to have that PvP control, or you could even go down, you know, Syndrome and hit that full precision talent tree, which is a really powerful tree too. So you have a lot of flexibility with that match. And we are running again, Lilia Valen here, I've been experimenting, and just, just to give you guys a little tip here, and I've been loving a lot more Valen and Wild Deer, especially if my Lilia is only 5225, it's nowhere near as strong as my, for some reason, my Wild Deer and Valen combo. It's just pumping out way more damage for some reason. So it's a really uh, good top tip there for you guys if you're looking for a mage match to run, which isn't your Lilia. But here we have both dragons here and i'm basically running this like a mini raid right now i can see the bdsl flame dragon i'm actually gonna start hitting it down just to charge up as you can see my rage because the thing is my artifacts will charge up if i attack the dragon and the dragon doesn't really do any damage to you which is beautiful it's just the enemies that are going to deal more so as long as you charge up those artifacts like i have wait for these abilities to drop down which they are doing right now you can see me now moving forward to use these artifacts and actually punish the opponent so that was already my massive Phoenix Eye there and now going into the Shadow Blades and moving a little bit closer so I can get at least some targets and a nice little tip here when you are targeting with your um, Shadow Blades if you are wondering how many targets you're going to hit wherever you aim if their portrait flashes red that means you're going to hit that target so if you only see one well guess what just move it and you might see two three four or even five to get that massive AoE damage like we saw just then. But here we go, we're at the last um, last 10 now, and it's been a massive game. It was so fun. The ending score, as you can see, is already coming up to 33.5 on our side. Again, this BD on 19.6. I do know from some of the BD guys, I don't want to hate on you guys. You guys, 
you know we love you here and you guys love me right um but you guys did say you know they didn't have any time really to prepare a plan for this which is fair enough because obviously they just dropped in a brand new season so it's understandable right but i think they had more fun on the fact that they actually got to fight someone with some decent power right they've actually got a very fair fight here they've enjoyed it you can tell everyone just keeps going all the way to the end even to the last second there's always a fight in no one backs up which was amazing to see so i hope you guys enjoyed the fight and we would enjoyed the fight and i want to say thank you to the bd alliance members here who were participating and made this um roots of war honestly one of the best roots of war experiences i've had so far during the matchmaking experience right so we're going to fast forward to the last couple of minutes and end the video on the full highlight there showcasing my rewards as well as what was the final score for you guys and again if you want to the full video on this game will be uploaded later on this evening so just check it out and you're gonna be able to watch that full one hour basically game all the way through with my live gameplay commentary as well which was done through the live stream so i hope you've enjoyed it so far and let's go back one last time to the future and finish up today's video and welcome back for that final time yes and here we are the last 15 seconds of the fight popping off you can see like i said we were fighting to the end which was amazing to see on both sides. I hope both sides have enjoyed today's full highlight video. You both, obviously, we all fought amazingly and it was an amazing fight on both sides. So we did hit the victory, TMO2 did win. Server 32's BDSL. Immortal with the 75,000 score on our side for MVP. And you can see here some of the actual stats, right? So you can see 45.9k final score for us on 21.1k on the Blood um, Seals, which is the BDSL Alliance. And the real crazy thing is the amount of kills. So you can see BDSL actually did kill way more troops. They killed technically almost 10 million. They did 9.5 million more total kills than us. However, we had more occupational points, we had more lifestone points, and we even had more gathering points. So it does showcase that you need to have some pr plans and priorities at least set in stone so you can gain all the points needed to actually close out the game right so i really do enjoy that we had the free life stones today one which was really cool it was a really close game like i say all the way up to the half an hour mark i mean you could start to see some of um the you know the breakage of difference right and it did end up being a twenty-four thousand point difference which isn't anything like crazy it just means basically the the bd alliance just really wanted to fight and honestly I, i'm happy with it everyone wanted to fight but we've got our little rewards here we didn't beat unfortunately our last um episode of our last roots of war we did hit some insane milestones on our historical one but we didn't beat them unfortunately which is fair enough maybe next time we will but here we go we're going to go through the mail claim our rewards we were rank 16 in our alliance of 13 you remember we have t5 players there as well you know and my final score on that was if we go and go back just a couple of seconds there we're gonna be able to see my actual score right so um we have doo -doo -doo -doo, claim those points so i scored 18 point nine thousand points so it's easy like i say guys you have to be able to hit 10k points in roots of war if you're struggling a nice little tip here for the ending of the video is for you guys to honestly join rallies join rallies join garrisoning buildings because the thing is if you're garrisoning a building yeah you're not the leader but your troops will generate you kill points because of them defending that structure and if they're not guess what you're getting passive points anyway, which is really, really good for your account. So you can always, always just use like three marches to passively garrison or rally and just use two marches for the PvP field and then use your best two marches, right? So it's a nice little tip there for you guys who are struggling 
for the roots of war. But if you enjoyed the full highlights, smash like, comment, and subscribe. My name's Mr. Sneak, an official Call of Dragons content creator. And here we are, TMO2, the alliance. I was in our second uh, TM alliance for roots of war, and we went again to server 32's BDSL for a monster jam-packed episode of Roots War. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've loved it. Check out later on for the full game if you want to watch any other parts and watch the full fights without any of the, you know, stoppages or cuts as well. So thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. And until the next video, stay safe, stay sneaky, and peace out, everyone.